What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing on with episode number 8 of Tower of God. This one's titled Coon's Strategy. So, yeah, he does need to think of something real quick because uh, things are not going well in their game of tag, essentially. So, um, last time we got a bit of backstory on Jihad. He is the first man to have ever climbed the tower and is still the ruling king of whatever kingdom exists above there. Um, like, whatever this world entails, he is the king of all. So, it begs the question, there's a lot of questions going on in my mind with this whole story, and I love the fact that there is all these questions, because I did not foresee myself getting that invested into the show at the beginning. I'm glad it's turned out this way. But, we have the questions of why the tower exists, how is it able to grant such power, why... How did Jihad become the first person to do it? Was there anything special about him in particular that allowed him to become first, or he just happened to be the first? It could have been anyone, really. Who was running the tower and creating the tests of the tower if he was the first to climb it? Was there a society existing in the tower before he climbed to the top? Was his wish to be the king? Did he wish for, like, long, just, like, an infinite life? Like, is that why he's still king? Because he wished for... Did he, like, wish for the universe or something? He said, the entire universe is mine. Like, if he said that, it's like, I, I am the entire universe now. So, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just spitballing ideas here. But in, in that case, we also got a bit more background on the princesses of Jihad. Why would he create them? Like, he has these strict rules on they are forbidden to... Uh, they cannot reproduce, they cannot get married, and things like this, to, like, pass on uh, the power of being a Jihad princess. So why did he make the princesses of Jihad in the first place? Because they're not actually blood relatives of his, right? They are chosen in some aspect by him. So why would he choose them if it runs the risk of them going on to do this? And since they're princesses, does that mean that eventually he will die and they're going to inherit it? Like, what's the grand plan here for him? What does he get out of having the princesses? Like, we had the, the shoes on a display cabinet analogy. But why bother doing that? Why create the princesses? I feel like that's a season 2 or season 3 question that I should be having, but I'm having it now because, I mean, they're setting it up, so it, it feels like it should be relevant in some way. But anyway, uh, so Anak and uh, Endorasi, was that the name? I think it was. Endorasi? Yeah, Endorasi. Um, they kind of have a bit more of a mutual understanding after this. Like, Anak still hates the princesses, but maybe not and or see herself anymore. Like, maybe they're on a little bit better terms. It's like, they're not friends or anything, but, like, she no longer wants to tear her throat out, probably, which is good. Um, they, they fail their tests, of course. Uh, and we now have our placement test where we are... We're in split teams. We've all got our positions, like Fisherman and the Intelligence Gathering ones, and it's like, there's the five positions that we went through. I've got them listed here, actually. Fisherman, close quarter combat. Spearbearer, distance. Uh, which is uh, Rock, interestingly. He's a spear, uh, spear bearer. Lighthouse bearer, which is illumination and information gathering, which is um, uh, Kuhn. Uh, scout for observing enemy movement and assisting. And then wave controller, which is uh, obviously Bam, Yoru. Uh, although... Kuhn and Yoru are on separate teams. Ruck's already passed, along with the other weird guy that came with Rihel and Undorasi. And it's like, they came together and participated, but it doesn't seem like they have any real joint ties as to why they would work together. It just seemed like that seemed to have happened during the first test. It doesn't seem like they have an ultimate goal that they're going for, except maybe they all just agreed to get to the top of the tower. Maybe that's their agreement, just like, we help each other get to the top of the tower, and then we're done. Because what, what's Rahel after at the top of the tower? Because something's just not right about her. She need, she wants to get to that tower. Like, that's her only motivation now. She wants to get to the top of the tower. 
And I question why. There must be something about it that she feels is necessary. I don't know what. But anyway, we're ha having a game of tag. We've got two people that are it uh, simultaneously. Uh, so one on each team. They have the, the badge on them. If you can get your person with the badge out of the um, out of the area in the designated goal zone, essentially, uh, you get 100,000 points, which is a heck of a lot, I, I believe. And then you have, if you manage to take the badge off the other per team's it, you get 200,000 points. So, obviously, the incentive is there. It's like, well, you can double your winnings if you just steal it off the other people. But that runs a lot more risk. So I suppose it's up to the strategists to work out, okay, with the team we've got, does it make more sense to try and protect or go offensive? And so far we've been uh, baiting them out. And uh, we've also got, uh, what's his name? I was just going to look his name up real quick because I know it's, he's, a, he's a ranker. Quant Blitz, that's him. So he's a ranker who is participating in this and helping out in the running off the test. Much to Lerero's uh, chagrin by the looks of things. He's not very happy about this. Speaking of Lerero, supporting our boy with Sakaido. Because, honestly, Sakaido uh, made me appreciate um, Lerero's voice actor so much. Kenjiro Suda. Like, I love that vocal performance so much. And hearing it again in this, I'm like, might as well wear the shirt. Um, so yeah, we are now getting stomped on by uh, Quant Blitz. So now it's up to Kuhn to decide how the hell we're getting out of this one and turning it around. Because it could go either way, and I'm very interested to see that. So, with the episode up here, watching this one on Crunchyroll as per usual. Um, link to that will be in the description. These are time-based reactions, so the bottom of the screen, around about mm, here or so, you're going to see the timer for the episode so you can sync up with your own footage. Um, we've got the Crunchyroll Originals thing, then probably an OP after, so... Um, I can't show full screen audio, subtitles, or anything really because of copyright reasons. Thank you, Molebeat, for the lesson. And uh, yeah, I'll count down three to one play. And as soon as I say play, start, you see the timer, sync it up, job done. So here we go in three, two, one, play. Crunchyroll Originals. Punch it with Webtoon. Yep, straight into OP. Oh, there was also one other thing I wanted to mention. I can't remember his name. Actually, whilst the OP is playing, I can actually look this up. It is... Uh, b -b 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 God, what what's his name? There's one person in particular that's having a lot of difficulty right now with controlling Shinsu. Ho, that was it. Okay. That's who I was thinking of. It's Ho. Um... He's having trouble keeping up his Shinsu. He's struggling to maintain it and utilize it in the tests. And we had the weird scene of him with a little note that said, um, do you want to climb the tower? And something more than that. So I don't know what's going on with that. But we also had a weird image to some creepy laughing face. And like, bunch of other people it was, it was a weird scene i don't know if that's just the floor guardian he's made a contract with because we saw yoru's and i did question whether that's the same guardian that they're all making a contract with to utilize shinsu or if that's going to be different per person i think it might be different per person based on ho hello Quant. yeah of course you are Thank you, Kenjiro. Of course, Rock is eating that. Yeah. Hmm. But that's only the Shinsu. Everything else about him is not. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, plan B time. A hundred? Really? Hmm. Well, they're not running, obviously. Wow, okay. Right. Probably not. This is probably a bait as well. This is probably all part of the plan in some capacity. I mean, that smirk tells you enough, doesn't it? Wow. Sucking up to the princess, of course. No interest in you. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, they need to talk, but they won't get an honest talk at this point. That's a good question. Was that really all there was? Okay. Right, what's your deal? Okay. She's not going to be able to cross the bridge. Precisely. Why 111 seconds? That's oddly specific. Whew. Okay. Ten minutes. Wow, okay. Why do I have a feeling the stairs are not his only option? Okay. Is he just going to breeze past them? I just want to see him... Yes. Right. As he is. So I'm guessing he was a scout. Hmm. And behind you. Nice. Yeah, it's not going to work. And back into the shadows. Yep. Not even attacking. Mm-hmm. That's a line. Oof. Yeah. Not not gonna happen.
Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. All right. No. <laughs> Interesting, okay. Uh, probably not. <laughs> well, right. Is it? There's something else, though, that we're all overlooking. Very true. Rack with the words of confidence, okay. Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh boy. Best ship this anime. Rock X Chocolate Pile. He's right behind you. You can see his little shoulder on the right there. Yeah, it's probably the bad choice of words. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. How far has she gotten? <laughs> wow. She's probably not even heading here. Oh. I mean, yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. Or oh, is this a bait? Hmm. Is it legit? Is she actually down there? It was a bait, wasn't it? It was a bait, okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> 
and already worked it out. Is this genuine? Is he trying to? Hmm. Okay. Was this part of the plan as well? Something tells me it isn't, but... It almost certainly could be. Former son. No, this was part of the plan. Yep. Green April's gonna catch. <laughs> Oh, wow, and use natural propeller up. Nice. Very nice. Clever. Although you're kind of stuck there now. Just saying. Okay. Yeah, you shouldn't be excited, but... Wow, okay. Kern always has a plan. That's also true. <laughs> oh. 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 What? Why is Larry helping? What? Larry helps the ranker? Hmm. I don't think you did. Where's Lowry in all this? Is it Lowry? I, I assume it's Lowry, the sleeping guy. I mean, you executed your strategy perfectly. You did not account for sleepy guy Lowry to actually... Yeah. That edit. Right. And they don't know. <laughs> yeah, they don't know. Unless... Right. Huh? Oh! Oh! So you're gonna say, make me pass? I'll let you catch her if you let me pass? Huh? Okay! 
Oh, he did it for Bam. Okay, is that why? They're not his team. There you go. The friends they made, that's the actual team he cares about. Okay. All right, okay. Hmm. What did he say to him? Oh, boy. Yep. Naturally. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy. Thirsty is all hell. Hmm. Uh huh. Right, yes. Okay. You say that. They're just going to get beat down, aren't they? Oh. I wondered if we get something like this. Hmm. Okay, I'm glad to see we're getting this sort of perspective from a character. Okay. Okay. Oh, damn. Straight killing people. Oh, and then head on brought you in. Hmm. That music shifts. This music, though. Yeah. Here he comes. No. You'll slow him down here. What? Why'd you kick him? Why'd you kick him? Wait. You don't think... 
don't think he could disguise himself with Shinsu, do you? No, surely not. That wouldn't be why you kicked him. Right? I don't think Shinsu has that ability. If it does, that's pretty impressive. But... I wonder why she did kick him then, otherwise. But yeah, that was interesting. What's Rahel doing in all this as well? Like, we didn't see where she went during all this. Perhaps she's guaranteed to go through anyway because of points. Maybe it is the points that are... And that's why she's only been eating apples, because then she has an abundance of points. I don't know. I want to go back to something in that episode, though, once uh, all these little bits end. Crunchyroll, Webtoon, blah, blah, blah. I want to go back to something real quick. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. So I want to go back here. Um... Yeah, when... Okay, so this character's name is... Uh, let's see, where were you? Struggling to remember. You've got a long, last of a long cast of characters here, so it's kind of hard. Serena Ridden? Is that you? I think that's you, isn't it, Serena? Yeah, Serena. So, I'm glad we got this perspective, because I did wonder if we might start seeing this, because... Despite it being very much a... It's a competition, right? Only one person can climb this tower. Everyone else here has to essentially be killed, right? Like, at the end of the day, you have to defeat and ultimately kill everyone here in order to ascend to the tower. But since it's just been such a jovial and friendly atmosphere for this time now, like, at the beginning it wasn't. At the beginning it was just straight battle royale, kill half the people here. Then they announced the teams, and everyone was very like, what the hell is all this about? Then you had the test with the Shinsu wall that they had to pass from it. It's like, we've got to get through this. And then the thinking test about the 10-minute the clock. That was actually a 5-minute clock. Um, hmm. But since then, it's like the tests of, And then the, obviously... Well, they've been in teams this whole time, getting to know each other, and then after the uh, the bonus test, which introduced these three new ones, and Dorothy, Rihel, and whoever the hell this mystery one is, I don't think we've been given a name yet. The one that was eating chocolates with Rock. I don't think we've gotten his name yet in the story. So I won't look him up, just in case that is a spoiler in any case. So Because I don't think his name's been mentioned as of yet in the anime, so I won't look it up. Um... But yeah, ever since that test, they've been very friendly, jovial with each other, training, passing tests, and it's like, just living together, essentially, and it does start to play with your mind, it's like, could you kill this person now? And it's like, it does beg the question, when you spend so long with someone, could you then kill them? I'm glad we got that from her. But then the the response from Ho, like, he says the line, that's always been our relationship, hasn't it? And then, finish the line, that music, oh, I love it. Goddamn, what's this, uh, Kevin, what's his name, Kevin Penkin? Is that his name, Kevin Penkin? I'm fairly certain it is, let me just double check. I don't, I don't want to miscredit. Um, let's find him here. Yeah, Kevin Penkin on music, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that was such a great musical transition, and you can see how, you can see how Ho's attitude has, his general attitude has really changed here, and I wonder how much of that is to do with the note that we didn't get anything else on this episode. We didn't get any idea of what that note said to him. Do you want to climb the tower? Read a little more. Shocked. Hasn't told anyone. 
Hmm. What's what's Ho now? What's he now thinking? Because he must have got something there that changed his perspective on how this all works. That makes me really, really curious now. That really does. Okay, let's see. And what is her plan then? So Endorothy says her plan works right after kicking this other guy. What the hell's his name? Who knows? Um, I don't know what his name is. I don't even know if I'd be able to find it if I looked for it. But whoever he is, she just randomly kicks him saying my plan worked. Hmm, I'm curious on that. They always have to leave a cliffhanger, don't they? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's episode 8 of the series. Of course, you're going to leave cliffhangers at this point. Like, why wouldn't you? But I don't know if, like, changing your visual image or even just who you are is possible with Shinsu. Like, that seems like the obvious, like, oh, he was uh, the ranker all along. Like, that would be my assumption. I wonder if there was anything different with the way he was acting. I wonder if it has anything to do with their conversation that they had in preparation for it, because maybe he was a bit over the top in his praise for her during the like the strategy bit. But then again, would the ranker be present for the strategy bit? I don't know. I really don't know what to expect of that, but... There must be some reason why she kicked him. And I can only assume that it's because there is some illusion to Shinsu. That's the only uh, guess I really have here. So we'll see if I'm correct or not next time. Uh, no spoilers if I am correct, obviously. But we see Head On um, appeared before... Uh, what's her face? Uh, I just said her name. I just said her name and it's gone again. Uh, Serena. So we know Helen appeared before Serena just as she was about to be killed by a ranker. Why did he choose her? I feel like Hedon is like... I don't know about you. But I get the sense that he is the guardian of the first floor and caretaker of the tower. That is what is written here. Caretaker of the tower. So if he's caretaker of the tower, he probably was there when Jihad went up, right? So he would know the history of the tower in its entirety. Who created it, why it exists, what purpose it serves. And that really makes me wonder why. Why is there a tower? What purpose does this actually serve in the world as a whole? That raises an even bigger question, actually. Going back to uh, the stuff we learned about Jihad last time. If Jihad was the first to climb the tower and became king or whatever, why is it that whenever someone else takes part with the knowledge, full knowledge of Jihad, probably, I, I assume most people in this universe, the regulars, at least know of Jihad and the Empire and all this, because they lived as a part of it, I assume. How is it that no one has climbed the tower and dethroned Jihad? Why is Jihad, to what we, we seem to be implying, why is he still king? Is it that he only just recently climbed the tower? And that this is like the first group after i don't i have no idea what the time span between jihad ascending and completing the tower and our current times are. i have no context of that yet i don't want context of that yet in the comments because i feel like that's something that the show will give over time because this show is almost certainly going to get a second or third season like uh, it would be i think it'd be stupid not to make a second season out of this at least 
it depends on what stopping off point for season one is here. Like, how do they wrap up the arc of season one? It entirely depends on that whether they get season two very easily. But I think Crunchyroll would be stupid not to invest in this. Judging by the huge response that this show is getting on Crunchyroll, like, not many shows get the same response that this has. And the amount of money in marketing that Crunchyroll has put in as well. So it's almost only going to get season two. But, like, how is Jihad still the king? Why are the princesses of Jihad, like... The fact that Endorisi is competing in the tower, and ultimately Anak, what happens is if a princess clears the tower? Are princesses inherently meant to be clearing the tower? I, they don't seem to be questioning it. But if a princess doesn't clear the tower, is the princess, I assume, killed at some point during the tower run, for whatever reason? Does he then select another princess? Is that what he's waiting for? A princess to finally clear the tower and succeed him? I don't know. There's a lot of questions here. This is actually a very interesting universe that they've built. Very, very subtly. Because a lot of this is background information that does not relate to our main character and the main focus. The main focus of the show is Yoru chasing after Raihel. Why is Raihel climbing the tower and why is she staying away from him? That's the main story that they're exploring here in season one. But I'm thinking far outside of that as to why the tower exists. Why Jihad? Like, they're just throwing little bits of information down. It very much is the puzzle analogy from Hanako. And I'm really starting to get into it. Yeah, this, this show's got me. It's really got me at this point. I have no idea how this is going to go, but... The penny is going to drop on Raihel sometime in the next couple of episodes. It's a 13 episode season, so we've got 9, 10, 11, 12. We've got five more episodes now. At some point in those five episodes, the penny's going to drop, and Raihel's reasoning for going through the tower is going to be unveiled in some aspect. Like, in some way, we learn of why she's climbing the tower. And there's going to be there's going to be one big reveal that just breaks it all open and suddenly something changes. I'm assuming Yoru is going to change because of it because all I can see is the classic betrayal storyline. He has one preconceived notion of this character. He he pushes himself to be with that character and then all of a sudden it all comes crumbling around when he realizes that's not who she is. Now, the question is, what happens then? Like, does he try and forgive her? Does he still do that sort of thing? And try and forgive her and bring her back to being the Rahel he knew? Or was that Rahel always a lie? It's like, something is going to happen there. And I can't wait for that reveal because it's going to click. And I'm going to be like, oh, shit. Like, this and this. Like, it's all going to come together. I'm sure of it. So... Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm enjoying the show way more than I thought I had any reason to, honestly. Like, you can't see my first couple of episode reactions anymore because mole beats. Um, but if you saw how I was reacting to this show in the first couple of episodes and how I'm reacting now, it's completely different. Like, the way I perceive this show is completely different to when I started. Uh, I feel bad for doubting it now, honestly. But, hey, some shows just have slow starts and they need the build up in the mid season to actually um capture me and that's why the free that's why the free episode rule exists like it is the most classic of anime watching rules you always give a show whatever show you're starting the first three episodes to see if it can hook you if it can't hook you within an hour it probably won't hook you over the course of the next three and a half or more hours of the show's existence so i'm so glad i gave this a chance i really am and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Leave a like if you did. It helps boost the channel, which now more than ever means a lot. Uh, we've got to get back up to our original sub count at some point. Uh, hopefully we'll get to 200 before the next uh, season starts. That would be a very nice uh, starting point for that. Uh, leave your comments what you thought of the episode. No spoilers, please. Um, if it hasn't expressly been mentioned at some point in the anime, I don't care if it's been skipped over in the original uh, like uh, original webtoon like even if it's been skipped over I don't want to know what happens because knowing this anime it might be saving that moment for later on as a reveal 
Like, anime does that weird thing with timelines. So no spoilers. If it hasn't expressly been mentioned in the episode, don't mention it. If I've mis if I have a misconception about something that did happen in, in the anime, please correct it, but don't use webtoon information unless there's absolutely no way you guys know what you mean. Uh what well, no I mean like you guys use your better jump to know what exactly constitutes the spoilers or not. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe as well to see uh, next week's episode as well as the rest of the spring 2020 uh, reactions you can find on the channel. And finally, I have a Discord server now. Come chat about anime, Tower of Gods, any of the currently airing shows, random shows from my anime list. I mean, let's just pull up a random show right now. Let's go with, I don't know, Kiznaiva. Let's talk about Kiznaiva. Why not? Another trick of production, actually, that I really enjoy. Let's talk about uh, Eromanga Sensei, which was a really weird show. Let's talk about Girls and Panzer. Anything. Monogatari series, B stars, Blend S, anything. That's what the Discord's for. So thank you everyone for watching. Until next time, see you guys later.